The stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas. It's 1159 at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans. Another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> guys and yeah, welcome, everybody to our daily gun show we come to you live every night at midnight eastern that's nine pacific for about an hour each night we'll do three gun related topics different topics throughout the week we run it live on youtube we simulcast it over at gunchannels.com where we're watching the comments from the people that are joining us in the conversation each night once it's all over it'll render into a video and we do appreciate the people that watch it later especially those that subscribe to our channel leave us comments interact with the various platforms that we're on that lets us know that where you are and that you're out there. We appreciate that as human beings. And then the uh, robots that run the internet uh, appreciate all that to help us get recommended to more listeners. And that's one of our goals. So we talk about it at the beginning of every show. We do appreciate that. We have hosts. we got three of us joining us tonight. Angelina, jumping in from California. Thanks for joining. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Nice. we got Bob jumping in from Canada. Thanks for joining. Hey, glad to be here. I'm down here in Tucson, and I don't know if anybody else is going to jump in tonight or not, but uh, we have a couple other hosts out there in different parts of the East. So let's see, it's Friday, and it is episode number 520. Is that something? I don't think that is anything. No, I don't think it is. Mm, I think Wait, it's, it is. it's the area code for Arizona. That's why I recognize it. At least not Phoenix. So the rest of Arizona is area code 520. So it's our area code show now it's friday though so we'll be talking gun tech and the gun biz this one we like to wrap up the week and solidify the industry give them a little boost uh and then we'll also talk about all our daily stuff do you have anything to talk about that happened might have happened during the day or overnight or since yesterday i guess um i don't i don't think so well it's oh, every yeah. matters we did that earlier or at least uh Ghost, I guess, had an Every Second Matter show earlier and then uh, worked on the website a little bit and posted uh, a quick uh, Minuteman University earlier today. Oh, on what? Um, just the general why or what why, What was it like? The whys of, or I guess the hows, the general hows of starting a 2A project. And uh, I guess I also filmed one on the whys that I haven't posted yet, but uh, just kind of the general gen generalities of getting people, or I guess a uh, an urge to get people to actually do stuff out there and not just uh, per just participate as an audience, and then just a little bit of the uh, how-to. It's like a two-minute video. Basically, get a website, get an idea of what you want to do, and get some help and then do it. Sounds like good advice. But uh, again, it's just to get people going so that when we have these situations like we had lately, uh, it's a little tougher for people to suggest that all gun owners are this or why AR-15s are necessary. That's the worst question ever. Why do you need an AR-15? Well, nobody asks why you need a convertible because it's just sort of part of the culture, right? Everybody understands that some people like having a convertible for whatever reason. It's not for everybody. It's more dangerous, but calls them out on it. When there's an accident with a convertible, nobody looks at, look down at all the other convertible owners, right? So I think uh, having more and more people, their info out there, their Second Amendment stuff, is just, just closer to that, hopefully. Oh, yeah, so I think you're right. Anyway, so we'll keep going with the show, and we can start off with gun tech. And I've been looking forward to this one, that folding wallet 22 Derringer, I guess you'd call it. Everybody know what we're talking about? One that kind of looks like a big credit card or a cell phone kind of thing? It's more like a computer card, yeah. Smaller than a phone. Yeah, smaller than a phone, but bigger than a credit card. And, you know, I guess it's called a light card. I'll grab a picture of it here. Did you get to hold it, like a shot? Not a shot, but then in the gun, last gun show I went to, uh, Bob had one and I was playing with it. 
it's not ideal it's not perfect but it's perfect it's super cool so here's a picture of it in the secrets you know an altoids box a little metal tin so that gives you an idea how big it is it fits totally inside of there with room to spare right it looks pretty thin yeah here's it is in somebody's hand and it's a uh, single action and then here's how you have to cock it back so it's not perfect it's not ideal but it's super cool and then it folds up of course so it's not an NA, nfa item just a pistol and it folds up all super cool here it is with some keys and i think they're like 300 bucks three something that's not bad i mean it's smart i can spend but it's pretty cool yeah for a nifty little you know like i mean that's an absolute concealment backup gun right mm, i don't know you know it's not as cool as your pen but oh, it's more solid than the pen the pen is super rare and expensive and this thing is it and this is more solid i think yeah i didn't like the trigger on the pen it was terrible and it's not weird like the pen either yeah not a normal trigger like a gun yeah yeah i actually love i i like it i think it's it's gimmick it's well because it but it's super deep concealment right that could be just but you could have that just about anywhere so and if you did take it out of your pocket and put it somewhere i don't think too many people are going to go oh, it's a gun <gasps> yeah just, i, I don't something. think anybody is going to think oh it's a gun no they're going to think it's a multi-tool and i think i've seen it with different paint jobs right mm -hmm. Well, you could. It's plastic. You could put it whatever color you want. No, it's 100% metal. There's no plastic. On it. Oh, it's, it's metal? It's all metal. It's yeah. even better. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. I thought it was plastic. Oh, no. There's no plastic on it that I'm aware of. Hmm. I thought I saw one with a different color, but... Oh, well. mm. Yeah, that is really interesting. Just to have in your watch pocket, yeah? Mm, I guess it'll fit in there. Here's a picture of it in there, right? Yeah. And then it just looks like you got a multi tool in your pocket. How many yeah. is it just has a one rounded or? Yeah, one barrel. Doesn't it carry some in the handle or something? That's true. So it looks like it carries a couple in its grip. Does it say how many? Well, it looks like more than a couple. More like, yeah, it looks like there's more than one in there, so. Pretty interesting, actually. So, are you going to buy one? Yes or no? Uh, probably yeah. can't buy one here. But if I lived in another state, I don't know. Three hundred bucks is kind of a lot for like a novelty, but uh, I would hold just four buy. extra rounds in the handle, in the grip. Four. So you got five rounds total. Well, twenty-two long rifle as a last-ditch gun to, you know. I mean that it's literally a belly gun, really, um, but or sneak up behind a bad guy and pop him behind the ear. But you know, it's still it's a gun. Your MI six days are coming out there, Bob. Yeah, I don't know what part of going into court. I'm like, yo, well, if I had their walk up behind him. Anyhow, so uh, aside from all that weirdness, I think it's cool and uh, looks like. All we get is one bad idea from the gun channel side, who's obviously something stuck over here today. What's going on? They're not even chatting over there. Over here, but just saying hi to each other. And then, uh, and that's saying use it squirrel hunting. I think that would be definitely a challenge. The squirrels would like that. And somebody was saying about watching Edge's chat. I think he might still be on. He started just like an hour ago, I think. And they were having all kinds of, they were talking about Trump, so they're probably going to keep going. Oh, yeah, that was going to be a... I, I kind of started to watch a bit of that, but once I realized it was going to be all about Trump and shit, and it was like, no, that's going to be a real... That's going to last a while. All right, well, so uh, I guess that's our first topic today. I can quit screen sharing, and we can move on. So, wait. Bob, did you say you are going to buy one? I said I would if I could. I can't. I would buy one. I would like them to send me one for free because I can't afford to buy one. So yeah. I would, well, if they yeah. sent me one for free and sent it to the States, then I could just put it in my safe deposit box. I think that'd be legal, maybe. So then we'll move on to the gun biz and how to help your local gun shop. 
Mm. Uh, buy ammo there instead of the big box store and pay a little bit more. I mean, I'll pay, you know, 50 cents more for a box of ammo to support a local store than, uh, you know, go and support a big box store. It's like, going to you know, turn on my gun rights as soon as something happens. That's good. But I usually think we'll, or maybe we usually break between the first and second segment of the show to feature one of the members over at Gun Channels this week. We're featuring some of the channels over there. And today it's Shwell 11, uh, one of the supporters since the beginning, if I remember right. Uh, it definitely was hanging around in the uh, chats well before Gun Channels was even around and uh, supported the channels through all the various incarnations of the place and uh, still over there as a supporting member, so we appreciate that. And he's out in Florida with uh, some of the people who are doing shows out there. And uh, yeah, just interesting, he's an Air Force. We don't get a lot of Air Force people. And uh, it's all into the ARs and the different... Uh, I don't know what you call them, call them accessories, modifications, build them up in different ways. So it adds a little bit of different flavor to the to the main news feed. Uh, but you might not recognize the name, so he doesn't really jump in the live stuff so much. Uh, but he does join into some of those live shows out of Florida. Tech Daddy and some of the others. Yeah. No, I've, I've watched him on a few of those shows. I like him as well. I think he's cool. Hopefully, I get to meet him one of these times. Yeah, he's one of the I've been wanting to meet, but he's always has issues with uh, different things he's got going on and hasn't been out to shot, I don't think, ever. Or at least hmm. I missed him if he ever did get out there. Yeah. But I don't get to Florida. I want to get to Florida. I really do. I do too. Now, you're both willing to go to Florida, even though when you look at a map and you look at Florida, it looks a lot like a gun. Yep. yep. Yeah, I don't feel like many dangers from it I, it doesn't it, it doesn't uh trigger me at all i feel like with all the dump trucks and things that we have and extra dirt that we could like fill in a portion of florida so that it looked less like a gun and more like a triangle or something less scary well you also make america a greater country right make america more, more of it that's a good idea we should take a lot of canada and just pour it out into the gulf or someplace no, I, I was thinking just to take some of them damn mountain years down because you know we got to drive over them to kill them my mileage that's an idea we do that a lot of mountains. we could use a lot more peninsulas yeah think about it man you could like that but china's doing that they're building islands in the ocean in order to get closer to japan for some reason Speaking yeah, of they have, like slave shops too. So, speaking of peninsula, we have uh, an islander jumping in on that U on the YouTube side. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, it's Mister Island Z. Why does he come to the show so he can go and hurt his voice? He's probably waiting until you're done with all that business. Oh, I don't think I don't, we I don't like when he's watching me do that because then I know it's making me like stage frighty. All right, well, come on. We're at 17 minutes into the show. We're barely in the segment, too. So, how to help your local gun shop? You were saying something about buying ammo. You're going to yeah, spend but, 50 cents there. So, Bob's going to save the local gun shop with 50 cents. Well, I'm going to spend 50 cents more than what I would pay in a big box store. Hey, right? big spender. Uh, it's no, like, I, I, I use my earphones. earphones. I only have one local gun store, and they never have anything really cool. So I usually just buy my guns online because I can get cooler guns online. And then they just mail them to me because I live in Canada. What do you like to your house? Yeah. Oh, yeah, handguns. No shit, really? Yeah. It's Canada. Uh, what's the once, you, once you get a license, like you can just, yeah, it's like, oh, you got a license? Okay, well, we'll just mail you your handgun. Man, Canada. I know. It's crazy. Like, like people think we have these really strict gun laws, but in so many ways, our gun laws are just like, so there's no waiting period? No, 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 because you already got a gun license. Of course. That's the thing is when you have a gun license every day, if if a felony any kind like it's automatically reported to your gun license and then they automatically come and take your guns as soon as you commit any kind of felony type act. Yeah. Um, 
yeah so that part really sucks the cool part is yeah you can get you can they can they'll just mail you a gun to your house I wish that was here well anyway going back on topic um i like to try to actually like shop at my local gun stores so you know maybe if i'm shopping for a stock maybe i'll go buy it there well, you have an advantage, of like, and, and G Webs too. I mean, you guys have so many more gun stores. Like, I like I say, I have one gun shop in my town. Yeah, but see, like, I live in California, so when you go into a gun shop, there's a lot of like other stuff, but there's not a lot of guns. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. Like, we don't like the gun stores in Arizona. Here's like a little pro tip. Sometimes I go to pawn shops in Arizona and you can get 10 round magazines for super cheap because nobody wants them. That's true. So like, that's a win, but I don't know. Like, uh, I think, you know, local gun shops are totally a thing that we should support. And, um, like I said, if I'm shopping for a part or whatever, I might get it, you know, at my local gun shop instead of the interwebs. You know what? That, that, you that is great advice, though. Is, is next time I'm in Arizona, I'm gonna go check the pawn shops for ten round magazines. Oh yeah, because they'll probably be dirt cheap there, and they're they're still thirty bucks up here. I got last time I was in Arizona, I got like four nine nineteen magazines, block nineteen, yeah. and were like thirteen bucks each or something. Well, damn, that's a good tip. Never thought of that. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. Pawn shops. Well, what are you going to uh, say about supporting gun shops, g -Webs? Daily Gun Show? This is one that we've uh, addressed a few times, I think. So there's, I think, a couple of things we've talked about in the past, things like bringing them donuts or uh, pizza or something. Um or maybe just like gift certificates to a lunch place. Sorry, I'm dropping links and talking at the same time. Um, but I think also one of the things I'll hit today is I think we've talked about it in other segments before, but maybe not necessarily in the biz, gun biz section. But the idea that, uh, again, uh, using your social media presence out there to help establish those shops. So if you've got Facebook or whatever, just looking at their store once in a while is something it gives them views i guess but if you help them share stuff if they're doing a sale i guess um if they're doing some kind of a an event you know posting that on your feed going to place like gun channels other social media platforms so that you're establishing cross links out there on the internet not just on a social media platform uh, those kind of actions help out the shops and they exercise your skills as somebody who's using the internet with intent instead of just drifting along surfing all the time. So uh, that's going to be my tip today is to help the shop out. Literally, if they tried to pay somebody to do that, they'd have to pay somebody who's going to run little bots, right? And those bots aren't as valuable as you. So value your data, uh, whatever, and put it down, you know, with intent. So um, that's the kind of stuff these stores are looking for. You know, they, they either they're looking for it and they wish they could pay for it, or they don't even know they need it. So I think it's one of those things that uh, is worth mentioning. Ed's just jumped in from San Antonio. We're talking uh, how to help out your local shops. Got any ideas? Well, I've been doing it for years. You know, taking some tips for you and other people is again buying the guns are great if you can afford to you know support your local gun store, but they don't make them you know the the, the bulk of money off the guns, the accessories. So you know, going there, if you're there, you walk in, you want to see what's going on, what the new guns are. Or buying some ammunition, uh, holsters, you know. I try to buy as much as I can. I took it at one shop, uh, which was a uh, uh, gun shack where, you know, I buy, I try to buy as much as I can from them. And, um, but, uh, you know, on, on the top of that is, is doing what you said is, is promoting them, you know, going on, you know, hey, this guy's, these guys treated me right. They gave me a good price, a good trade in on my gun and upgraded to this or that and uh, on social media facebook instagram and so on and you know showing your 
you know, the prizes maybe you dug up, you got a great deal on a gun and so on. And just, you know, because of reiterating the point, which I'm, I'm, I'm if I, I joined a little late, whether you guys covered it or not, is that as you've seen with dicks, which who gives a crap about dicks and so on, and they've done this in the past, is these big box stores can fold up and decide to change the way they want to do things. And where these local gun shops, that's where they're making their money, their bread and butter is, you know, is by selling guns, accessories, arms, and so on. And by patroning them and buying as much as you can, you know, on your budget, uh, it helps keep them afloat. So when these shops do decide to get political, these people are always going to be there to help you and uh, and respect your business. What do you think about buying like local stuff from a shop? So if the shop's got, you know, maybe a local holster maker or a local, I don't know, some somebody who's doing something, um, and then specifically buying that, then I would think they're probably making their money and you're, you know, keeping that relationship between them and the manufacturer happy. Well, I mean, there's a, a classic example. Uh, there's, a, there's a gun uh, holster manufacturer called In Your uh, On Your Six. Um, they're they're out there by 410 and Bandera Road and the like the Corleone Valley, and that that particular gun shack carries their holsters. They have a good relationship with that holster manufacturer, where they carry his inside the waistband holsters that he makes for thirty dollars with a lifetime warranty. And um, you know they've been symbiotic for a long time. Um, just really just you know you know pushing their local products and the people the the guy that's care uh, uh, Sarah Coat in the local area and so they're they're really and training so you know they, they're, they're really digging into everybody to kind of keep uh, their presence uh, alert um so everybody knows about them and helping also the the, all the smaller businesses that are doing all that stuff you're talking about yeah for sure that's very well said edge but to correct Bob earlier about that handgun business, just you know, Angelina, yeah, he can he they can have the handgun sent to their door, but they can't they can't carry the ammo in the in the gun and or they can't store the gun or the ammunition in the same place. They have to lock them up in two different places. So you can't have like a nightstand gun. No, the gun the ammunition has to be in one box locked up, and the gun has to be in another gun, another box locked up. They, if they in Canada, if you use a firearm to defend yourself from property, you have to explain yourself. That's not a justifiable thing. Like you would be at fault for that, correct, Bob? Yes, you you actually have to go to, well, ninety nine point nine nine percent. You go to by the time you go to court, and then it's decided whether you committed manslaughter or self defense. But you're gonna get charged. You're getting charged with something either way. You're yeah. charged with murder. You're, you're either murder or violence to another person. Right. Then decide if the circumstances justified it, but it's not a given. They're not innocent until proven guilty. They're you're guilty, but even though you're guilty, we're gonna because you were getting killed or raped or something, we'll take a look at it and decide if it was okay for you to defend yourself. At this time. Exactly. Yeah. It's I not mean, a fifty percent success rate, right? It's not like a given that just because you're here, you'd be justifiable. It, it has gotten better, but there's one just recently that's pretty bad. It's because it was an, an Aboriginal kid who got shot. Um, yeah, it's looking really bad. Um, but he got he got found not guilty because he said it was an accident. The gun went off accidentally, and you know these kids had been stealing stuff and they were armed, but because he was Aboriginal, it wasn't fair. So yeah, there's there's. It's it's gotten better. There's been a few cases where people have used a gun in defense and been gotten off in the court like almost instantly, um, or without too much delay. But then this latest one now, you know, of course they're social justice uh, warriors because it's a, it's an Aboriginal person, so that becomes this race issue. Then now that's going, but yeah. generally it's been not bad or getting better. But yeah, now of course, yes. Well, me, me and Bob go way back. Uh, you know, many years we've been talking and, and be on these chats. And um, I mean, from my understanding, the majority of gun of Canada are more in the rifles than, than handguns. Yeah, um, well, handguns are our biggest growing um, restricted weapons. Handguns and ARs are the biggest growing uh, gun dem demographic in Canada right now. 
Yeah, I, I I know a guy. Uh, Bob knows him too. Uh, his name's uh, channel name is uh, what was it? Was it what's Sean's channel's name? Oh, three zero two one zero seven or something. It's it's the worst channel name ever. Well, the, it, it it's after a mold, but here, but that but that gentleman owns a a sta a Steyer Og, and he bought it when it was legal, but then it got put on the restricted list. So now he owns a he owns a weapon. That can that he can never shoot at the range, but he can't sell either, and it just sits in his safe because he can't do anything with it. It's in that that that. <laughs> yeah, Limp. I know it's ridiculous. Yeah, Limp. but uh, also, um, going back to gun shops and how we can, yeah, how we can help your local gun shop. Well, I think, uh, you know, part of what you're doing, you know, doing that tour really helped, you know, opening people's eyes to all the local gun shops. Maybe they didn't even know they were in the area. Uh, it was really cool. Um, yeah, I think this year we're going to try to do it because it's ridiculous to try to have one person or even multiple people because Angelina's going to go on a road trip. Bob's talking about doing one. Hopefully Dan will check some out when he goes down to Tulsa and some of the other people are welcome to do that. So, you know, instead of having just even a few people doing it, we'll try to make it more of a collaborative thing where everybody is welcome or encouraged to share their gun shops on the site. I think, I think business cards that say the daily gun show and what we do is send them out to people if they ask and, and people can put them on a box of donuts and give them to a, a local gun store. Well, that sounds interesting. I think it'd be great, man. And then local well, gun store go daily gun show. What's that? So maybe we get some viewers, more viewers. Maybe we get some interviews to like. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Door. Yeah, somebody, you know, you'd be able to go to a store and go, have you been getting free donuts from the Daily Gun Show? And they're like, yeah. And they'll just be like our people bringing them in, like just our listeners. <laughs> we could also sell like diabetes uh, medicines. Oh, yeah. Well, compression yeah. socks. Compression socks, I think, do well. Yeah, I've got a pair of those. They make my feet go numb, though. Back to the gun shops. Anything else, or should we just move it on along? Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah. All right. We tried to address that topic more than once. So if we did miss something, or if you're listening to this in the future or something, and something comes to mind, you can always email us dailygunshow at gmail.com. And of course, you're encouraged if you're doing your own podcast or your own videos or Facebook stuff or whatever it might be. Um, take stuff from our topics and run with it that's the whole point well the only one thing i can add to this may perhaps and you mentioned this many years ago to me g webs is also asking if these people want to participate in in advertisements um i mean would you like to be part of a community that's really pro 2a and always really supporting local gun shops more you know that's our main interest more than anything and would you like to you know get you get you in communication with people that can you know possibly you um post your uh your you know your your, your gun shops uh, uh, advertisement. Yeah, both is just like in general, like just a welcome to the community. Plus, if you're trying to do a channel, you know, and make some money or pay some bills with it, then uh, local gun shops are a great source of uh, sponsorship. You can do a lot for them. They're not going to expect a lot. You don't need a lot of funds from them. So uh, that might be a great way to get a uh, new camera or to a show or something like that. Well, you remember that one shop we went to? I've never even been to. We kind of discovered on the back end of it that real fancy uh, gun sh uh, gun range that had all of them on the assortment of arms. I mean, oh, everything the latest and greatest. Yeah, the mission, point. mission yeah. something. Mission and, and, and man, I've never even been there before. I went there with you, and I was surprised. I'm sure it, if if they kind of did that under the weather with a lot without uh, a lot of people chiming in on that, they must got a lot of money or a lot of investors. Which I don't, I don't think would really bother them to, you know, spit out a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. All right. So we're moving along. What should we hit next? Hmm. I don't know. Why don't we talk about the gun of the day? Another one off of Instagram. Yeah. Right. Boom! There it is. Yuck. Ugly, stupid. Whatever. That's my carry gun. So it's a Glock 41, it's 45 ACP with the long slide, and 
bunch of them and staring at it because they wish they're just in awe. And then the 45 ACP is that big. That's not a mountain. That's 45 ACP round right there. Oh, good God. Giant magazine full of... Big, full of, fat, slow bullet. All right. They, they killed a bunch of, uh, <laughs> of the uh, Filipinos. It saved us in World War One and Two. It saved freedom. Must be good. And it's in a Glock. Even better. Put a surefire underneath of there. Done. CG switch. I've never gotten in a gunfight because all bad guys are afraid of me. Yeah. No. It's like, uh, it's just hideous. Uh, it really is. That, that is a, that is an ugly looking piece of ordinance. Um, I think the beautiful classic smooth lines of something like, Oh, shut the fuck up. Like this Glock Gen 1 right here. Looking at it, sniffing it. No, 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 no. And he's about to bring up his damn freaking. Uh, we know he's no, do it. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna bring it up. Everybody knows what I'm talking about and how beautiful it is compared to that blocky piece of plastic. You talking about 1911, Bob? No, oh, I agree. I don't know. A Glock is a pretty, uh, pretty fine piece of machinery. Oh, good God! Not another one. It works. Well, oh. See, I, I, I want to do instead of like those challenges oh, that all kids are doing. I want to do a pistol whip challenge with Bob and with the Glock and compare it to like a Beretta or maybe even a full steel 1911 and see how it feels between the three guns and being pistol whip by all three. Have maybe. you not shot a Glock or? Oh, I've I've shot, geez, 10 millimeter, compact Glock. It's, I, and I've shot his other block. It's, you haven't shot like a, I don't know, like a 17 or a 19. Since I know you're a fan of stupid nine millimeter. Um, I don't know. I'm not really a fan of it. It's just, it's the perfect carry. I don't around. think he knows anybody that has one around. Um, you should totally shoot, like shoot a Glock 19. That's my favorite pistol. Oh, no, no, I, I that's just, my carry gun. You know, Bob, Bob got to hit up his butt about Glock because they're polymer. See that polymer. polymer. Anybody see that I'm recent? CNN? Anybody see that recent CNN guy shooting the AR-15 at the range? Yeah, where he's mm -hmm. holding it all done. He looks like a noodle while trying to hold an AR. <laughs> that's what like trying to hold like a 19. He was is that like, where the is that where the general shows him how to shoot semi full auto? Yeah, full semi. Auto or whatever. Any auto, yeah. And he just pulls the trigger faster. Was... And then, he, but the way that that guy's holding the gun, like spaghetti arms, that's how you'd hold the nineteen. So I want to see Bob shoot a Glock eighteen. No, you can see me shoot. I'll shoot anything, man. I don't have any. Then he talks shit about it right away. See so that <laughs> smile walk up on his face, and he's like trying to conceal it. Uh -huh. he... Oh no, no. I mean, I love. Like, to get... you know, I love shooting guns. But I would still go, yeah, but it's still shit. I'd rather shoot this. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Somehow we tried to pull it away from it. Because you know why? Forgotten Weapons hasn't shot this gun recently. So that's why Bob's in, against this one. Well, for, 40 years from now, he'd be like, this is this is gun websites, you know, 45, long slide. Oh, uh, good. It's on auction. It's on auction. That's how you'll know I'm dead. <laughs> Wait, how will we know you're dead? Somebody's got my fucking gun. <laughs> well, I, I do plan to outlive everyone, but that's just a plan. Yeah, whatever. So uh, let's take a second and go. I'm going off the, I'm going off the schedule. So uh, we had talked before about Edge. I think even this week as one of our, mem our featured members of the day. Oh, yeah. I remember reading that. Yeah. I think we did, yeah. Edge, because Bob, both Bob and I have been in Edge's garage before. Um, let's see, Edge is the first one to pass out, I think, in a live chat on the gun channels, at least. Yes, I, I have, I have that, that that status. Yes. Now, I was Bob I, the first? Was Edge Edge invited Bob in for the first time to a live chat ever? Was there something like that also? We way back in the day when these things were kind of starting off and they were smaller, there were that many gun channels around or, or sorry, a uh, chat gun chats doing uh, it was kind of bouncing between the chat. Remember, G was those back in when you guys were is you Yankee, uh, that guy there, Dan and Dan and so on. I'm talking about five, six years ago. And th you guys pretty much held that one chat. And the alternative was was every now and I'd shoot the shit with the Canadians, the Canucks, which was Sean and and uh, Gun Geek, and that's how I met Bob. 
And then Bob, being the chat whore that he is, he wanted to get more chats, started really coming into more of the, 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 the American, what do you call them, chats. And I used to have them on frequently, and that's this how we was, got started. This was a while ago. Gun Geek is legit. Like, that dude didn't sell out for nothing, and he was just showing his crazy dumb guns that he liked, and then his dad would get all beer drunk. <laughs> just talk guns and, like, nerd out, right? That was legit. The but idea, I, I had him and Murphy in one chat, man, and it, they got lost, dude. I mean, they started talking like vintage guns, and you were just like, okay, I, I can't add to this, man. Uh, I know. I think I was there. If yeah. not, I was watching it because I was just sitting back. So how come Gun Geek never came over to gun channels? I know he did a couple of channels, but did he just quit doing live stuff, or he just well, never he still does live stuff? He just – he does he doesn't – he's – I don't know. He doesn't like crowds. It's just him and Sean. Yeah, that's pretty much how he does it now. He just doesn't really want anybody getting in there unless you can really add to to the flavor. And, and all they do is talk about ammunition, old guns, Canuck stuff, and some vintage, you know, uh, well, rifles. He's, yeah, he's really into the vintage shit, like military surplus vintage. All right. So that was a little diversion there, but yeah, thanks, Edge. And Edge again is one of the members' gun websites, not just freaking gun channel so i do appreciate all your help with keeping us in business like literally over the last few years i don't know all right so uh that was gun biz and we already did the gun of the day what do we want to do next movie okay so we try to do a gun related movie every day z's on his way in okay now we can do it so we try to do a gun related movie every day and uh something has to do with guns this one definitely has to do with guns something you might not have seen in a while that might be relevant here. Or if you're a young and something you ain't seen yet, and I don't know how many youngins we got out there. So today's movie is District 9. So I guess we got enough people in here. We'll just do it this way. Angelina, you seen it? Um, I need to see like a picture of it or know what it's about. It's about I think aliens. I've seen it. The aliens in South Africa? I have not seen it. I don't know. It was a big movie. Oh, it was, a, it was a classic movie. I watched it like about about a month ago, and because uh, I haven't seen it in a while, awesome flick. So, Bob, seen it? Yeah, a couple times. Z, yes. Freaking bronze. Then uh, Edge, yes. He just said he's seen it. I've yeah. seen it. My favorite movies all the time. So, Angelina, Z's these pictures helping at all? Uh, I think I've not seen this. All right, so you're. Down with science fiction movies or no? Uh, yeah, sometimes. All right, well, then you got to sit it out. So then, I don't know. What are we saying about Dis District 9? I can't say enough good things. It's my, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's, it's a really interesting concept. I mean, you know, basically this slave spaceship that the slaves have overthrown their masters comes in and kind of crash lands on Earth. And all these creatures that were slaves to these other beings have, you know, they're, they've asked for, you know, sanctuary. So asylum. They, yeah, asylum. So they've just given them this big area of South Africa somewhere that's just desert. It's the Jonesboro, right? Johannesburg? Johannesburg, yeah. It's like basically the shanty cities or whatever outside. But that's, yeah. which, which they really, I don't want to say exaggerated, but they... Uh, went pretty deep with that. What? And, the and, slum, and, the uh, the shanty towns outside of the Johannesburg. Well, they do and, and, with aliens, though. I mean, these are basically aliens. Are gross. No, I'm saying they also have that in real life too, though. Well, all right. And they like cat. They like cat food. Rule number one: Don't push the button if you don't know what the button is going to do. With alien technology, that is. So I guess the it's supposed to be some kind of racism thing. Oh they yeah. Had, you got well, they were second class them. citizens. They didn't really have any rights or whatever, right? Yeah, or relatively. Right? And I then guess. they were and then they were surrounded by those that gang of people that control that like underworld of, of that mess. Um, that are they were the ones farm. that sold them to the cat food. Remember? Yeah, sold them to the cat food, and they want they want those guns, those cool alien guns to work. But you have Wait. to have. Alien, alien genes to hold up, hold work. up. Just stop for a second. Stop for a second. Now, Angelina, do you think this is something that you want to watch before we keep talking about this? 
ruin it. Um, <clears throat> because yeah. it could get really spoilery here in the next, I don't know, five seconds. Yeah, I kind of want to watch it. So if you guys could let's it. go to let's just go to thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever. And would you, you know would you recommend it or whatever? Yeah, because so, uh, everybody that's seen it, they either like it, don't like it. But let's uh, let's do it that way. That way we don't fuck it up for. Her. Awesome movie. I'm surprised it never had a sequel for whatever reason. It does have a sequel, Chappie. Well, sort of, but no. It's you know what? I don't think it's set in the same air quotes universe, but it is the same guy and I think the same director. But anyway, like Chappie. But okay, so Bob, what are we doing with thumbs here? Two solid thumbs up for sure. See? This, this is a big one. I'm gonna use actually the prawn hand and uh yeah so i'll give it two prawn thumbs oh shit yeah you cut off you got two scoops of goop in your eyes what you're saying oh yeah yep because that way i can do a wield right and then edge i give it a four out of five man i thought it was a great film that was very 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 what are you talking about, edge? Thumbs, thumbs thumbs you got four thumbs you got five thumbs edge four out of five thumbs that's a, that's a, that's well, 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 that was after I sniffed that stuff in the can in the movie. So, aliens okay. in the District 40 or District 45? Pretty good. That, I, wasn't that the video game uh, that was always at the movie theater? District 45? When? Never heard I don't, of it. I don't think so. And it looked like giant aliens, <clears> kind of <throat> like that. I'm giving it two thumbs up again because it's one of my favorite movies. I think it's super good. I think I own it too. On top of it, and I'll still watch it when it comes on TV. Like it's ridiculous. Like we'll it, it, it's a it. good movie. Now it's a little. Is it long or short? That's what I don't remember. It's a, it's a long movie. It's okay. It's like a ninety. I don't know. We'll see. What, what in I my mind, was, ninety ain't long. A lot of people in the south thought, you know, when they call them prawns, they were like thinking of like a crawfish boil. Yeah. That's what they're supposed to be. A little bit of garlic and butter, man. They'd have been in trouble, yo. <laughs> Right. I guarantee. If they'd been in Australia, oh yeah, two hours, one hour fifty-two minutes, two hour movie. Okay, but it's worth. No, it. that's that's two and a half, my friend. One fifty-two. One fifty-two is two and a half hours. Because one twenty and thirty, but anyway, math. You put you you put some slap your mama in the in the board. Oh, that's what I'm saying, dude. If that that could not take place. In Louisiana or in the South in general, like that would be just all. They would, it would have been bad. It would have been what really. About bad. Australia, man. If it landed in Australia, it'd be like fire up the Barbie. We got yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Prawns, prawns. So I don't know if you could tell, uh, Angelina, but we definitely all suggest that when you do have time, take the time to watch the movie for sure. Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like a winner. She's got like a yeah, mess. I don't, I don't, if Angelina watches all the movies we tell her to, though. No, no, no. That wasn't saying that. I mean, this is actually like a legit good movie. It's got a plot, the decent writing, good action. I mean, it's. if Anyway. I do watch the movies that you guys tell me about, actually. That's what I. Uh, yeah, I watch them. I know. Is it worth it, or are you like constantly disappointed because we send you to. Watch um, some old crap. <laughs> I will say that it's always a lot of like dude movies, so it's not like you guys are like, oh, check out this nice rom com. But, no, 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 but no. I mean, they're pretty. A lot they're pretty of times good. the movies feature like a nine millimeter, and that's the same thing. No, I will ask. Do you consider like Mr. and Mrs. Smith or um, what was the other one, the big hit, to be rom coms? Oh, not so much. Uh, yeah. I've seen the big hit, uh, but I have seen Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, Not really, yeah. Mm, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I wouldn't well, say that. No. What was it well, really? Was, a comedy, it? was it? Well, uh, I don't know. Love it. What, so what was the one with Tom Cruise and uh, and uh, uh, the blonde lady that was in Charlie's Angels? Clara. No, uh, it was like uh, I know what you're talking about. He's uh, like the CIA guy, and she wants to date the fireman about, uh, guy. And... Yeah, you're talking about what's her name? Uh, uh, Carmen Diaz, or uh, yeah, Cameron Diaz. Yeah, Cameron Diaz. They're both Diaz. in that movie, and like it, it's kind of a rom com with action. 
But it's a Tom Cruise movie, so you'd have to be ready for that. What was that flick with Samuel Jackson and Gina Davis uh, that was freaking awesome? The Long Kiss Goodnight. But I would not. Kiss that, kiss. Is a rom- yeah, that is not a rom com. <laughs> that's a good I mean, that's unless, a cool you, unless you consider, uh, yes, Miss Daisy, I'd be honking. Unless you consider <laughs> that to be. <laughs> okay, just my, my, my ignorance. What is a rom com? Romantic comedy? Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not hit. I mean, is anyone really? Yeah, no, I, Edge definitely isn't. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I not, mean, I watched like that that Vietnam a, movie with Charlie Sheen. That's like the one I always remember. Platoon? But, yeah, Platoon. I watched that. That was okay. And then have I watched ever, uh, Vannon. That was have cool. you Have you ever seen Apocalypse Now? Is that the one where they don't speak English and they're running up and down the Mayan temples and shit? No, no. They're, going, they're going on the river, but no, this is it's, with Marlon Brando. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's, yeah Apocalypto. And I like the Apocalypto, too. I like both of those movies. I've Apocalypto seen that. The 1970s Vietnam movie, or 1980s Vietnam movie. No, there's... Oh, well, Apocalypto and, uh, is... and Apocalypto is the one she's talking about, where it's Amazon rainforest. It was directed by Mel Gibson, and they don't speak any English the entire movie. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was a good flick. That was a good that flick. Was definitely a good. Uh, and learn how to swim. I guess would be the other thing I would say about that movie. Oh, I, you know, I did. I did understand that part. Here, you want to talk about swimming? Best rom com ever. Um, Overboard with Goldie Hawn and uh, Kurt Russell. Do you, do, you, do you know they're remaking that? They're remaking it, but they're gonna have the, they're gonna have the. You, have, you better grab those reins right now, Mister. They're you better just it. grab those reins right now. It's gonna get it out of control. They're talking about Goldie Hawn, man. I don't know what to do. Never seen that. Movie. Oh, I'm sure you have, but man, whether you liked it or not, <laughs> or thought to remember you saw when it. That came out, I was old enough to know what I wanted to watch or whatever. I remember that when that movie. I didn't like that. Oh no! It was actually it was a hilarious movie. I it was one of the best movies I think I'd ever seen. I think my favorite cool, my favorite quote cool of that movie was like, "Sir, do you see the ship? I can't see. Sir, there's a fat man standing in front of me." <laughs> I watched it because it had Snake Plissken in it, and I was young enough where I it might have not been my choice at the time. They're gonna remake it with, but it's gonna be the opposite. The they're gonna yeah. use that that Mexican actor, uh, Eugenio de Ruiz. Uh, he's gonna be the girl. He's gonna play the rich playboy, and sh- the girl's gonna be the 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 the, the leatherneck heart or carpenter. I don't know how no, we. She's a, she's a carpet cleaner. No, 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 no. no. I'm about to start muting people. I'm not just gonna come in here and start muting. Uh, she's a carpet cleaner. She's a carpet cleaner in the new version. Right, we're gonna go off the side of a cliff. So let's let's just stop the engine. Let's get back on the road. All right. So let's do. Uh, I think we should do gun shop of the day. All right. So gun shop of the day. Try to do a gun shop every day. But today we're talking about the 17 loophole tour. So we broke it up into segments, and I think we left off. On the way to Illinois. So after Illinois, met up with Dano. Actually went to Illinois and headed out to meet up with Pink Panther at that range. No, what was it called? I didn't even put it in here. I forgot about it. So uh, we went out to East Illinois. No, West Illinois, almost in Iowa. Literally like spitting distance from the Mississippi River uh, to a place called The Site. That's what it was called. I need to add that in here. And um, can do that right now. So uh, went out there and watched the Manicore Arms bullpup shoot, right? So uh, met up with Pink out there, and uh, we did that the first day. And Dano didn't feel like driving out there, I guess. Um, what was that called? The bullpup shoot. Hemorrhoids. But um, uh, I think it was, yeah, the bullpup shoot. He was working. Man- Manticore Arms bullpup shoot or whatever, right? But I think they're the ones that host it. That's cool. I'll probably just call it a bullpup shoot until they pay me, because a lot of people got paid to be out there calling it the medical. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, uh, I did attend it, and I guess I should be happy that I got to attend it. I don't think it was open to everybody, but uh, it was kind of cool, and Pink got to see it. That was good. And then we got to see that location, which was interesting. So then I drove back across Illinois to the Chicagoland area for a party, or vice versa, I forget. I had to drive back and forth across Illinois, is basically the point. And then the next day, I met up with Dano for a really small gun show in Illinois. 
So uh, that was kind of cool. We went to this gun show, and I guess that was the first time I met up with Dan O'Ever. We had been talking, and I think co-host of the show already at that point for like a year, right, or more. Oh yeah. So we'd known each other for a long time, internetly or whatever that's called. Oops. And then uh, so we got to meet up and go to that show. Then we headed to Gat Guns, which is a gun shop that we had both been to back in the day uh, in the area, and then uh, checked it out and had a good time. Then headed to a place to eat some chocolate chip pancakes, which was awesome. And uh, then... How was the rate? Wait, wait, wait. How was the ratio of chips to cake? Well, I had to kill my pancake site. So we're going to take a tour since you brought that up and go over to my... In my opinion, it's a legit question. I mean... Oh, it's valid. I think we had 15 different chocolate chip pancakes along the tour. And I'm going to see if... Oh, so do it. Maybe this, again, this site got killed. So this takes us to the ninth. Hey, oh, yeah. but it had its own. It had its own pull tab, though. G, that's awesome. Yeah. By the yeah. way, G Waves has some killer pancakes in San Antonio as well. Mm, what are you talking about? Where did you take me to San Pancakes in San Antonio? That Mexican restaurant. You just figured all you need is to bring your own chocolate chips next time. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So not chocolate chip pancakes. Yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. I killed the pictures. I killed the pictures because oh. the site, but I did get it back up. So this was did the fifth know? order of chocolate chip pancakes, <sighs> and it was. I was trying to look for the picture because it was a pretty um, classy joint. It was like an American Americana. What do they call it? American food. So like Denny's, except like a local shop, but like everything that would be on a Denny's menu, I guess, or you know, just regular stuff. Greasy spoon, or you know, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Nicer than that, though. So it's a nice place, classy, little old ladies being the waitresses. So their pancakes were good size and then with, like, whipped cream and all fancy with, like, ch extra chocolate chips sprinkled on top. So I'd have to say they were up there. They were up there. How much um, was that cake? And how many in the stack? I don't remember exactly, but they were up there. They were probably in the top five for sure of the 15 in the tour. And maybe, I can't say top three, the bacon was weak. And that's what if I could show you here. Well, that's you. what doesn't everybody know that you always have a side of bacon when you have chocolate chip pancakes. I well, mean, that's part of it, and that's yeah. why you know, the pancakes were dolled up and the whipped cream and everything. You know, it's nice having whipped cream on there, especially if you don't ask for it and they just give it to you because you get that salty, savory going and it just makes everything go crazy. But, um, anyway, so yeah, decent pancakes. Thanks, Dano. But then we got in the van and the transmission died. So uh, that cost three. I was just about to ask when you're driving all over the two states, three states there for that three, four days, it was after all of that. That's yeah. when it happened. And I was basically on track to be in Illinois for that day, meet up with Dano, meet up with some other people, check out some other gun shops like uh, Rick, uh, Big Gunner 81. I don't remember if he was there or not. And then somebody else, uh, maybe Tony, down a little bit southern in Illinois, so I could potentially go south a little bit, meet up with Tony or something. So, uh, and then I wanted to get out of Illinois, going towards where Copper Custom is, and that's not necessarily. It's like an hour south of Chicago, I think. So, if I was down by Tony, that would have worked, right? So anyway, I was kind of leaving it kind of open, but the transmission died, and that took days, and just basically had to sit there being all mopey and spending money and then waiting for a new credit card to show up so that I could pay for it. And then once I could pay for it, with the work happen? Luckily, it is a fleet vehicle. So being in Chicago, a fleet vehicle transmission was obtainable. So it was really just a matter of waiting for the new credit card to get there so that I could give them the number and let it go through. That was half the wait. And then, you know, knock on wood, everything worked. And then uh, I ended up checking the transmission in Maryland. So... They wanted you to do it like a few days later. I did it a few days later, but I don't know. They want you to do it a few weeks later. I did it a few days later because of the mileage or whatever. And it's still working fine again. Not fine uh, so I guess this has taken us through the 13th, which is um, just that. That was it. So I didn't have a chance. I didn't have a vehicle to uh, go anywhere. And I already had infringed on Dano quite a bit. Uh, the way the transmission died, we were already like an hour from. If I remember right, we were like half an hour or an hour from Dano's vehicle because we were both in the van. Drove all around getting pancakes and driving to gun shops. And then the van died, so he had to take an Uber back to his car and then drive his car back to get me so I could leave my van, van in this parking lot of a, like a massage parlor and bedding place, like off-track bedding or something. Well, then why don't you just use the van space that was 
anyway, timing, timing, my friend, timing. Yeah, keep each other warm. No, that is not what I meant. What but anyway. So, no, I wasn't going to sleep in the van. Is that what you mean? No, I meant you rented to the people that had the uh, massage therapist. I don't know. It was a classy massage place. They were nice. They said they didn't care if it was in there. And, no, and the way it works in Illinois, at least, is unless somebody calls the police on you in a parking lot like that, you don't have to worry about getting towed. And that's what I was worried that's about. That's awesome. That's nice. Man, and, out here, they... Um, anyway, never mind. It was Sunday. Sunday. Is the other thing. It was Sunday, so I could have towed it, but I didn't have anywhere to tow it to. So basically, I had to uh, wait till the next morning. Arrange with uh, I went with Amico or whatever it's called. You know the chain, so that if I had to do something with warranty, I'd have a chain, and uh, arrange for AAA to tow it there, and then that was free. So AAA is good to go for that. They dragged the van, and I got pictures somewhere of the van getting towed over to AAA. I mean AAA towing it over to that transmission place and then they basically diagnosed it and hung on to it until the credit card got there and then did the swap so uh, all in all you know knock on wood again it's cost a lot of money but it got done well and you know i guess if it had to break it's better there than in the, there's it could have been a lot worse places right like what if i had been just jumping over a creek bed like one one end of a crickety old bridge jumping across a broken old bridge to the other side and then right then the transmission went out or like literally at the exit to Cabrini Green or something. No, I get, they got respect down there. They they're I'm cool there. In fact, they probably could help me out real quick. Well then, okay, maybe that would have been good. We just call the ambulance, and then they would have come over, and then we would have just like swept out the chamber. ambulance. Didn't go in there, but that's beside the point. Um. Anyway, so that was a lot of fun, and I got to hang out and get yelled at for wasting a bunch of people's time and money, and then made a decision, do I keep going to Bannerman Castle and just go nuts and kill all the credit cards, burn them all down, or do I put my tail between my legs and run back to Illinois, or run burn back? Burn it down. We'll find out next time as we dig into the uh, Gunshot Loophole Tour. So give us some feedback if these are boring. We don't have to rehash it all. I don't have to rehash it all. I like it. But, you know, that's one man's opinion. My yeah. dog was willing to share his space with you, G-Wibs. I'm telling you right now. Your what? dog wouldn't share any space. He kept trying to hump my dog. My dog had to put Because your me. dog's gay. No, my dog is just really pretty, and your dog is, like, goofy. You know, denial's not just a river in Egypt, Bob. That ain't, a normal, that ain't a normal dog. Well, <laughs> Bob, gay dog. No, and rivers, um, so I guess that means ankle holsters for full size guns. Wow, you better have a big wow. leg. Yeah, you that's better the, have a big. That's what, the, that's what the wife calls it. Really wide pants. Oh, I was just gonna say that. Actually, what did I'm like? For example, um, I'm in a habit of not wearing pants. Like bell bottoms. No, I every day. Bottoms. That would work. So I don't know that ankle. Uh, I was going to say, like, Ireland's going to be in Hawaii. Like, what are you staring at? I got shorts on. What are you staring at? What if you wore, like, Ugg boots? Check it out. I got it. I figured it out. You just make it look, you know how you had the gun earlier? You just make it look like it is a, uh, the the anklet <laughs> for the uh, courthouse. Just full size gun? Yep. James, yeah. It, it's, just, it's just, uh, it's, you know, so it's smaller uh, than a tablet. One of those, one of those uh, monitoring anklets. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. It's just make it look like that. Hey, I am. Hey, hey. Relapse is all part of recovery. So, like, literally, you know, if anybody's asking me any questions, James Yeager carries two Glock twenty sixes on both his legs. Yeah, but again, where's pants? It's it's tough to do when you don't wear pants. Well, you just tell people what the fuck you're looking at. <laughs> now that is not what Aloha is all about, Mister Edge. But, uh, like, legit. What kind of uh, support, you know, to keep it from falling down would one have to use for a... Now, when we're saying a full-size gun, are you talking like a Beretta 92? Um, what, like a 17? Glock 17? You know, are we talking a 19... When we're saying full-size gun, is that what we mean? Or do we just mean something that's not like a Derringer or something? You know what I'm saying? I've heard of people using those uh, ulti clips or whatever, um, you know, for inside the waistband and their boots. That's me. Ulti clip. 
and they're using that, but I, I'm not going to clip that shit on my boots. Well, and plus, that's just... not ankle carry, man. That was the question, was full-size gun ankle carry. Now, is this a good idea, bad idea, or was it how to do it? Edge wears those, like, boots that go up to his knees. Oh, yeah, the, I do. The hooker boots? Well, I got, I got, I, I got a uh, wash buckler, swash buckler. I got, I got, I have buckaroo boots, and then I got the rest of them. The other ten pairs I have are regular. Bob wears those Doc Martins that go up to his knees with the laces. Oh. And them. I do not. In oxblood. Mostly, I wear just like old army. He doesn't stuff. have enough character for that, G. Come on. I was gonna say, I think I, Bob's. I do Bob, have. You see I that boots and, uh, steel -toed steel -toed one and some kind of weird knife sticking on the other side. Uh, I've, dude, got had... the, I've got steel-toed uh, engineer cowboy boots, right? They're uh, called a, a roper. They're a round-toed cowboy boot. Hey, g -Webs. Did you, uh, you responded to uh, my Instagram with the question of who the three people were, right? That I said I had that one hat? You do have that hat? Well, I was going to say, if you remember what I'm talking about, that movie, I wanted the pair of boots that Jack was wearing. Like, full on, uh, what would that be, knee-high moccasins or something? Those, really are, those, those are really expensive. If you were looking into buying them, uh, you like you have to like go to like somebody who makes them like a, some kind of um, community inside of a, of a, a reservation. Of a reservation. Mm -hmm. And man, those dudes. They want like three or four hundred bucks for a pair yeah. of uh, knee high moccasins. Well, you know, you know what the alternative is. You go and you get the beer and you do it yourself. And here's the deal: it's not as easy as anybody might think. I might be happy to pay the dude that much. Well, no, it's not. Oh, no, I mean, no. I want to. I want something like that. That that the, it's awesome stuff, man. And they're very comfortable, from what I understand. But then I would be culturally appropriating because it's no longer the 1980s, is which is where I live. So. I got yeah, I have, that well, might be a bad idea. I'd have to I scalp you if I saw you. Of, I got a couple of pair of moccasins. I wear them all the time. Call them canoe shoes. Um, but my lace up ones are like real traditional Cree moccasins, and uh, they're great, man. I I wear those even when I'm down in Arizona. I'll wear those walking out in the desert or something. All right, I gotta cut you guys off. This is turning into a girl chat. Thank you. Shoes. You know, talk. Hey. We're gonna talk about bras. We're talking moccasins and boots. Well, I, I, I wanted I wanted to get in tactical bras, but are, am I crossing the line? What tampons are you using this month? You on your yeah. heavy flow or what? Extra flow. Yeah. All right. Toilet paper roll. So, did, was that ankle holsters for full size guns? Is in no I think holster. it was. The no yeah, I think that was pretty alternative. It sounded like a whole lot of no is what it sounded like, really. If you sift through well, all of that, that's what was said. Yeah, pretty much a no. Oh, at least that's what was implied. <laughs> I guess that's how it got drifted over to the boots. All right, so what do we got left? Um, we could talk a little bit about history. There's some couple interesting things, I guess. Um, Today is Texas Independence Day. Also, 1845, yeah. Florida becomes the 27th U.S. state. Oh, the gun state. State that looks like a gun. Raise a glass to all those crackers. That's soon going to, what, outlaw AR-15s? And that is a, not a negative connotation because they actually drove cattle, and that was why they were called crackers. 1923, the worst issue of Time magazine was published today. 1943? 23. Wow. In 1942, the Royal Air Force raids the industrial suburbs of Paris. Left that means, wine and cheese. That means the British bombed Paris to get at the Nazis. So, 1945, Finland declared war on the Axis. Go Finland. Yeah, but what year did they do that? Newfies. Newfies. What no, year? No, no, not Newfies. The real fees. So it's 1945. Yeah. I mean, okay. they're late to the party, but it's all right. Uh, mostly because they were occupied at the time and they had to fight their way back. And then Russia. they had to fight the Russians after they fought Russia. the Nazis. Russia didn't declare war on the Japanese until two days after the Americans dropped the bomb. Well, I hesitate to bring this last one up because I don't go for all the stuff that goes along with this one. But it is funny, so I'm going to bring it up because of it embarrasses Clinton. But today in 1999, Monica Lewinsky appeared on national television to explain 
her situation. The blue. Yeah. I did not have sexual relations with that one. Blue dress. Jizz on your dress. So somebody was born today. Does anybody have any idea who that was? I bet you there are a few people born actually today. Uh, uh, so I'll uh, get one clue. It was in 1847, and it has nothing to do with guns, really. So it's Bob's birthday. All I'm gonna say is that Happy uh, birthday, Bob. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. 18 what? 46. I'm gonna say mm-hmm. I have no idea. Sam, hey, wait. Uh, travel out. Travel. Sandy Lawful. Nope. This would be someone who is an inventor. An inventor. Tesla. Close, close, but Thank no cigars. Man, no. So it's an inventor, an inventor in the United States. It's like our you own little there. country. Edison? You, no, it's still not Edison. Right, it's not going to be Edison the next time you ask either, though. <laughs> Edison? Edison? An inventor of a device that we all use all the time. Well, they we all didn't. used it until it evolved. The you know, toilet like guy? Whoever invented Tele- it. Telegraph guy? Sam Morris? Bob's going to be at Dildos. And- nope. It was something that rang occasionally. Oh, Alexander Graham Bell. Winner. So Gizzard almost had it, and he was at least in the ballpark. Oh, famous Canadian. Wait, did I win it? Yeah. Oh. I still want to know why. Canadians. That's how we do the tactical quiz now. We just let them watch us win it internally. And nice. Then, yeah. All right. So, am I have the tactical hot shot of the day? Yeah. See, Bob. Uh, see, I want to still know how Canadians have astronauts, but they have no spaceships. We have the man who started the tactical hot shot of the day here with us right now. Dan, all foamed up. Dan was pissed off right now. Oh, uh, wait. What? What's going on? I'm the tactical hot shot of the day. Are you now? All right. Uh, congratulations. Uh, way to be a winner. You're the tactical pop quiz hot shot for today. Bravo. <laughs> What's that called? When you do stuff inside the family? We nepotized it. Incest? Incest? No. <laughs> Nepotism, I think, was what he was just talking about, I hope, because the other one, not so much. Yeah. Well, he said family, so I'm just like, mm-hmm. All right, well, so, all right, so is that legitimately, we didn't even have any covering fire? Is that what this show has devolved into, my friend? Is that what I walked into? We're definitely evolving, so we'll be doing something different with the tactical quiz going forward. But uh, there was actually some other stuff I was going to do, but I didn't get prepped for the show. So we'll end all oh, that. Okay. And I think we've covered everything. So uh, tomorrow is the weekend, which means that this show ain't going to happen. We'll be back on Monday with episode 521. Uh, we'll be talking about, is it okay to make funny gun videos? That should be an interesting one. And then all of our normal Monday stuff we talk about behind the scenes and then uh, shooting events that are in the calendar. But before then, there's all kinds of stuff happening. Uh, Caliber Corner on Saturdays. Rick Life as I See It is on Saturdays. Uh, the Moon and Smeggy show is on Saturday nights. Tardot does a show on Saturdays. Um, Sunday mornings, I think some of them dudes do their own shows and some people repost it on gun channels. Uh, Yoder will usually repost uh, Come and Talk It, a syndicated radio show out of Texas, which is pretty good. Um, the girls do their gun gals on Sunday, and that must be Jesmola's show before that. No, we've been watching the Gun Channel side. I was just trying to get a conversation going over there, so thanks for showing that we're out there, people out there. Appreciate it. Um, and what am I missing? The van chat on Sunday for sure. And then I was going through all that and I was wondering, do we want to do a, a gear tool chat tomorrow? I haven't done one in a while. Did anybody give me a round? I am not. Or most likely I, I will not. Uh, what time? I'm going to say what time? I'm, I don't really care. So sometime in the morning if we do it or in the early part, of, earlier part of the day perhaps. Uh, no, I'm not saying I wouldn't tune in. I'll definitely listen when I get a chance. Vanessa, I'm up, I'll let you know. Really watch on Saturday. I don't know. Um, I know Jimmy is taking some time, but I know they're also trying to do something where they're collaborating with others. So there might be an early watch before Caliber Corner or after. And, of course, there's usually lobbies. Knives have been doing lobbies pretty consistently. 
and uh, posted them. You never know when Smeggy's going to have some time into a cave. I think that's everything that's happening show-wise. Busy the weekend. Yeah, they've been getting busier and busier. It's pretty cool. Um, I think we're done talking. Anybody else have anything? I'm starting a new channel called Zuzu's Pedals. I'm just kidding. You had your channel earlier tonight, though? You guys are talking about Trump? Yeah, we're just going to get down with the whole, you know, Trump getting a little, I think in my, my opinion, getting a little ballsy with he's getting a little popularity and running with it and saying outlandish stuff that is really going against his base. So it was interesting, man. We got, we got some pretty good uh, following in there and uh, some commentary. So check it out, man. Right on. Yeah, thanks for being a consistent show on Fridays, too. We uh, try. Russ, uh, like, not Russ, uh, Midnight. I oh, no, we forgot his show. I did forget his show on Sunday. Show on Sunday. Um, I also forgot. Somebody was asking earlier about the, oh, Russ, I guess, was asking about why his, uh, what do you call it, perk or whatever got refunded on the uh, Gun Channel's fourth year anniversary. Uh, we started doing the math on getting the cards uh, printed, and it wouldn't have worked out. There wasn't enough um, people involved with it, so instead of waiting for it to go through and then needing to refund everybody after the fees all went through, uh, it was just easier on the system. To, it was actually only possible to refund them before the stuff goes through, so that was before it ended. So uh, that was a decision that we had to make, and we made that one. Uh, we'll have, you know, we have the backs, and we have people voted on them, and you know it's possible that we could go forward with uh, another with that project in another form. Um, but anyway, that's uh, why all those were refunded. Well, I was wondering uh, about that. If if you get lucky, you get the Ace of Spades with the Edge four thousand six on the back of it. So it's all good. And then RL is saying he does a show after midnight on Sunday. I didn't know that. So yeah, damn. You're, and you're posting it on Gun Channels, then post it in the uh, schedule. Uh, there's lots of mods over there. Myself, Night Strike, or somebody can help you uh, post it over there. Good to see other people doing shows. That's awesome. It's interesting to hear the different uh, people's formats and conversations, and you know, people or different people jump into them. So I appreciate everybody who's uh, doing that and having fun with it. It's been an interesting week, nevertheless, and last two weeks. All right, so um, I think with all of that, we're good to go. Uh, Angelina, don't you have a new patch rolling out today? Or am I crazy? Um, I think you're crazy. I was say those are mutually exclusive. What are you talking about, G-Webs? I could have sworn you said you had a new one popping today. Uh, no, I don't think today. I mean, you will in probably like two weeks. Is it wrong for a T-Rex to have long arms? Yes. Well, they, I was going to say because they don't, but okay. What if they, I, as a little baby, always picking up heavy things? And that's, what I that's why that's why T-Rexes were always so angry. There was all places all over their body they couldn't scratch. Like what specifically? Wait, so is that the quote of the day, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> no. That is a good one, though. I mean, I just figured with wisdom being a spouse like that, that it, that it could be. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that's a good reason. Imagine having arms that you can't really reach anything with. Yeah. Like, well, uh, <sighs> every time you look at him, you just get pissed off. That's probably why you're so angry. Short arms, brain cells. Uh, I appreciate Bob's paleontology um, <laughs> interest in the government. Anyway, speaking of history, uh, let's do our quote today. It's by uh, Ernest Shackleton. If you don't know the uh, history of them or you don't know anything about them, read more. Anyway, pretty famous explorer. For that, I want to remind everybody, please like, share, subscribe. Give us our thumbs up. Oh, did I even give myself a thumbs up? No, I didn't. There we go. That felt better. I'll give you a thumbs, you give you a thumbs up, Bob. 36 yeah. people watching tonight. We really appreciate that. Thanks. And thanks, everybody who's telling other people about it. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of cool. Our views are going up. That's neat. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, if you can, support us on Patreon. Why not? A few extra bucks, throw them our way. And on that note, yeah, our quote, Ernest Shackleton. Difficulties are just things to overcome, after all. Uh, I guess that was his take on, you know, uh, I think he went to the... Everything? Well, yeah, I think it was his take on everything. I think he went to the South Pole. Anyway, uh, on that, thanks everybody for watching and listening. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Yay. Guys and gals, go to websites.com. Encourage you to take a CCW class every year. Practice at least once a month and carry every day. Thanks for watching. Gunwebsites.com. <laughs>